Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey and I am back from my honeymoon in Jamaica. Face a little bit more tan, not burnt. Don't ask me about the rest of my body. There's a reason I'm going to continue to wear a long sleeve shirt on this show. But we got quite a bit of notable Cowboys news and rumors to get into. So of course we're going to start with Ezekiel Elliott and the off the field drama over the weekend. We were really close. As I mentioned before I went away that there's always something that happens around the Cowboys when I'm out of town. And we made it pretty good. Yeah, Tyrone Crawford had, hit, had, had charges filed against him. That was fairly minor. And then Zeke gets handcuffed, not arrested over the weekend. I'm sure you've seen the video by now from TMZ where he pushed and shoved and fell into a 145-pound at most security guard who probably flopped a little bit as well on that one. Look, something was definitely said to Zeke before that, before he turned around and got in the security guard's face. And fair or not, the bar is higher for NFL athletes, and it's super high and sensitive for one Ezekiel Elliott. He already has one strike from the NFL. And as we saw last time around, the punishment process is, I'll put this nicely, a bit of a wild card when it comes to Roger Goodell. So in the grand scheme of things, yeah, I think it's a pretty minor incident. I don't think it's suspension worthy at all. But I am not Roger Goodell. You and I don't get to decide what the suspension, if any, or any punishment is for Elliot. So I think there are some reasons to be concerned here. There's video this time, and it's, look, it's not a big deal, I don't think. Yeah, he shouldn't have done it. Yeah, Zeke was being a poor decision maker, as we've seen multiple times in his young NFL career, off the field. So how worried are you about Zeke's latest off the field incident? Let me know on a scale of 1 to 10. 1, you're, you're not even worried about it. 10, you're pressing the panic button, button and you're assuming Goodell's going to drop a 15-game suspension and then maybe another 6 games just because it's Goodell and Zeke Elliott. So I think there are reasons to be concerned here, not only just in terms of the immediate on-field impact if there is a possible suspension, but even this is just another, maybe not a full-on strike, but another reason to have some doubt do you want to make him the highest paid back in the NFL? Again, I think it's a minor thing. I'm not overly concerned about it. Here's my problem about it. <laughs> Goodell gets to make the decision here. He's the one who decides everything. And the NFL was very close to having to drop the hammer again on somebody. You don't want it to be Zeke if you're the Cowboys. Some more Cowboys rumors here, and I guess I have to be the bearer of bad news on my first day back. Love that. How about signing Gerald McCoy? Yeah, don't get your hopes up on this one. Just the one star. It would have been at least two had the Cowboys not drafted Tristan Hill in round two this year. Now, McCoy has finally been cut by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I think many of us agree he'd be a really good fit on the Cowboys defensive line. He'd be a strong addition for them. The problem is the report from Mike Fisher and even the Dallas Morning News too. The Cowboys have very little interest in adding McCoy. And I think Tr Tristan Hill's presence is a likely factor in that. You look at what McCoy has done the past couple years. He's been good. Now, the production has definitely declined in recent years. But look, if you can promise me six sacks, and I think that's a fair outcome for McCoy, that's pretty darn important. And you could definitely find a way to get McCoy on this roster. Maybe you trade Malik Collins. Maybe you cut Tyrone Crawford, who now has his own off-the-field stuff to worry about there. But you also want to find snaps for Tristan Hill. And I think from the Cowboys' perspective, even though if I don't fully agree with it, they really like Tyrone Crawford, who it maybe isn't as good as Gerald McCoy is, but he does bring you more position flex, and he's kind of been the unsung hero of that defensive line the past couple years, I think. They like Malik Collins, although he's had injury problems, and they want to get Tristan Hill at least as kind of a 1B in that three technique role, so there aren't a ton of snaps. And on the flip side for Gerald McCoy, who did have an Instagram post directed at Dak Prescott, so take that for you know what it's worth, he wants playing time too. He's not going to, I don't think, fully get every single snap as a three technique for the Cowboys. So again, I would have interest in it, but the report is the Cowboys don't have much of an interest in, much like Ndamukong and Sue, they like their current core, they don't want to drastically change it, so unfortunately, I'm not getting my hopes up for a Gerald McCoy signing, even though that'd be pretty fun. So let me know in the comment section, should Dallas go after Gerald McCoy? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I figure most of you will say yes, I kind of agree with it, but I don't know if the Cowboys quite feel the same way at this point. Now, today's show brought to you guys by BetDSI, the Internet's number one sports book. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet and use that promo code right there on your screen, Cowboys120, 
for 120% deposit bonus. Put down 50 bucks, they're going to give you 60 for free. You are not going to find a better bet out there. Just in time, by the way, for the NBA Finals. And go bet on the Warriors, obviously. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Cowboys120. Let's talk contracts then for the Dallas Cowboys. We'll begin with Dak Prescott. Is there not going to be a team-friendly deal? I'll give this one three stars, and I still think it makes sense. And again, the number one thing, of course, is define team-friendly. Is team-friendly 25 million? If so, don't even bother getting your hopes up. Is team-friendly 28 million? Well, now maybe we have a bit of a chance there. So the Cowboys and Dak Prescott, they continue to work forward on a deal. Now, I found this interesting. The report from Calvin Watkins says that the reported deal here is in the range of 100 to 120 to 130 million. He also didn't mention the years, which, I mean, come on. <laughs> kind of important there. Now, if it's a four-year deal, which I think makes more sense, that's in the $30 million range. If it's a five-year deal, all of a sudden you're in the $25 million range, so I kind of figured that was a hint, hint it's a four-year deal. But again, when it comes to Dak Prescott and the Cowboys, you have to define what team-friendly means. Team-friendly, with the way contracts are going, that's like $29 million. The, the deal I projected months ago for Dak Prescott was $29.5 million. So if you can get Dak at 27, 28, and that's probably asking a bit too much at this point, that's kind of team friendly all of a sudden. Now, if you are still committed to 25 million, I wouldn't really get your hopes up all that much. It was probably never gonna come in that low. And one more note here as well, as we've mentioned before, the sooner you get deals done, there'll be a very common theme here, by the way, for the next couple of, of uh, rumor items. The sooner you get deals done, the more money you save. If you're the Cowboys and Dak Prescott, you should probably get the deal done, at least for the Cowboys, before Carson Wentz and before Jared Goff. Because of those three guys, the next one is always going to be the higher paid. So get that deal done before those two, and all of a sudden, you'll be saving a couple million per year on those deals. Obviously, you guys know I am now back from Jamaica. You guys don't care what I did. You guys know what I did. What did you all do while I was gone, though? Let me know in the comment section what fun or not-so-fun activities you can be funny, be mean, whatever. Let me know in the comment section what you guys did for the two weeks I was out of town. More Cowboys rumors. How about Jalen Smith extension talks? Two stars on this one. Welcome into the conflicting reports portion of today's show. It's all a mess, apparently, the past couple days. So... First off, 24-7 Sports says the Cowboys and Jalen Smith have had extension talks. And then, you know, Clarence Hill says, nope, there have been no extension talks whatsoever. Here's what I think happened here. The framework of the deal was discussed. Maybe it's not a full-on, hey, we're going to start making contract offers back and forth. Maybe it's, are you looking for this? Yeah, looking for that. Okay, nothing substantive. That doesn't, that's not a word there. Is it a word? I don't know. Anyway, nothing extremely important there for the Cowboys. Nothing in-depth, but just a little bit of an outline so they can add it to their future. And say, okay, here's what we got. Because remember with Jalen Smith, he's not an understood free agent after this season. He's a restricted free agent. So you can hit him with that first round tender. And then, you know, pay him $4 million and then work out a long-term deal after that. So I don't think an in-depth contract negotiation happened with Jalen Smith and the Cowboys. They've got Dak and Byron and Amari and Zeke and, you know, all those guys to take care of first. But maybe some discussion was had. And oh, by the way, when it comes to Jalen, uh, the linebacker market's broken. C.J. Mosley is so far out there beyond everybody else, I don't even know if you can factor it in. So maybe we put him at like 14 at the high end. Or maybe, just maybe, the Cowboys finally do what the Patriots are doing. And maybe the, the Dallas Cowboys and the Jones family business, by the way, shout out Mike Fisher for, for pointing this out, maybe they find a way to get some legal, by the way, totally legal deals with Jalen Smith's businesses, i.e. Clear Eye View and the MEI and all, all that stuff. And maybe Jalen Smith's business life c coincides with the Cowboys family business life, and then Jalen takes a little bit less money on his next deal. It's what the, the pages have done with Tom Brady, and frankly, if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, I'm begging Dak Prescott to, to launch the D4 health training program and tie that into, in, into the star. That's just what I would do. But maybe you see Smith take a little bit less money than he could otherwise get on the open market, which if so, would kind of be a big deal for the Cowboys and, and Jalen because he's a fantastic player. And as long as that knee holds up and I feel pretty good about it right now, you should be pretty happy as well if you're the Cowboys. So he is a focal point of that defense. So I don't think the extensions got too far into it, but maybe just some outlining, some wink, wink, nudge, nudge on that front. 
More conflicting contract reports. reports. An Amari, have the Amari Cooper contract talks, talks stalled? Wow, awful right there. All right, two stars on this one. <laughs> yes, no, maybe, I don't know. It, it, it's a mess again here. So we got the first report from The Athletic that says Cooper, Cooper's demands, they are way too high. The third report, the most recent one, is that contract talks have stalled. And there's also a second report, by the way, that says they haven't even had contract talks. So I don't know. It's probably somewhere in the middle that, yes, they've had some semblance of contract talks. I don't think demanding and then saying I'm going to hold out is, is maybe the accurate d description there either. And in the end, this deal's going to get done. The Cowboys traded a first-round pick for Amari Cooper. They're not going to let him walk. Now, maybe the deal gets done before the season, mid-season, whenever. The Cowboys are going to pay Amari Cooper. And again, the report said that Cooper's contracts were shockingly high. They never defined shockingly, and that means it's actually not that high. That's just one side trying to lower the, the cost a little bit there. And if, if, by the way, if you're Amari Cooper, you ask for $18 million at least, by the way. Like, that is at minimum your opening line. Well, hey, it's a year later. You should pay, pay me like Beckham. Beckham has been hurt the past couple of years. I've been healthy. I've, I've played pretty well for most part, beyond a couple of missed games here and there. You saw the offense changed without me. They'll be fine there. So I think from that perspective, you don't have to worry a whole lot there. I think this deal does get done. Probably comes in around the range of, eh, let's just say $17 million per year. So would you guys pay Cooper that amount? Type 1 for yes, type 2 for no. It's a no-brainer to me. I, maybe the national media feels differently about this, but we saw how much the offense changed. And, again, do it before Julio gets paid because that's going to bring the, the price up as well, before Hopkins gets paid. So I'd pay Cooper $17 million right now, assuming he takes it, and I feel pretty darn good about it. One last rumor for you guys is Travis Frederick going to be back in week one. I'll stick with three stars on this one. I feel very confident in it, but, you know, setbacks can happen, all that kind of stuff. But I feel very good about Frederick being able to go in week one. So, too, to do the Cowboys and Frederick himself. That remains the expectation. Now, in terms of getting back to true practicing, the goals have him ready to go for training camp. Now, do make note, in addition to the, the Giaberre syndrome, he also had surgery for his shoulder and a hernia. Now, make note in, in terms of the hernia, that was not the concerning sports hernia. It was a far more minor procedure, but still, that's two different surgeries in an offseason. So, maybe he's not quite Fred Beard, you know, all pro level right away in week one, but I do think he'll be good to go for week one of the NFL regular season. And if so, that's a big boost to the Cowboys' offensive line. No shade intended towards Joe Looney. He fared, he fared very well in his absence. But Joe Looney is not the best center in the NFL. And when healthy, that is Travis Frederick. So you bring back Frederick. You're feeling a lot, a lot better overall about that front. You're open Williams or, heck, even McGovern or Suofilo play better with a supremely talented center alongside them. If Tyron stays healthy, Martin Collins, you're probably in pretty solid shape there. So I do think you see Frederick back on the field for week one of the NFL season. And if so... That's a pretty big deal there for the Dallas Cowboys. So hopefully that's the case. And if not, you know, we'll keep you guys updated. But for now, things look good on the Frederick front. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.